It was a crucial game to keep Miami's playoff hopes alive, and Miami responded with a sense of urgency for one of the best games of the season. Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero helped seal the 127-120 to 120 Heat win, bringing them into a tie with the Nets for the sixth seed and just two games below the Knicks. We break down the game, Bama to Bio's incredible defense on Julius Randle, and much more on today's episode of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg here with David Ramil. Thanks so much for making Locked On Heat. Your first listen every day and for subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on YouTube. Recording this after the Heat beat the Knicks 127-120. to 120. Jimmy Butler, 35 points, 9 assists, and 4 steals. Tyler Hero, 4 three-pointers in the fourth quarter to bring them home. And as a team, the Heat did two things well tonight. They defended Julius Randle, and they made threes. Uh, the win draws them to within percentage points of the Nets for the number 6 seed they'll play here in Miami on Saturday. David, what stood out to you? It was just the incredible sense of urgency. All season long, we've questioned whether or not this team understood what was needed of them on a night-to-night basis. They've kind of waffled trying to find their identity. They haven't had any kind of success in finding their rotations. But tonight, there was a playoff intensity, uh, a level of intention, to use Eric Spolster's terminology, that I don't think we've seen from this team all year. I think it was single-handedly the best game from the heat this year they knew mm-hmm. exactly what was at stake there was a, a, a again an identity to this team that we haven't seen they were physical they challenged julius randall they didn't take guff from anybody it looked like it was going to get chippy it was really spicy really fun atmosphere at miami Dade arena and they just absolutely understood what was at stake in tonight's game and they played an incredible floor game defensively and offensively Again, best game of the season by far. Um, you know, you said that to me right before we started recording, and and I was a little surprised to hear it. And then you kind of <laughs> go through what happened, and it's hard to argue that the, it 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 wasn't right. I mean, I know they lost to the Knicks um, in the last time that these two teams yeah. played in some sort in, in dramatic fashion at the end there with that Julius Randle game winner, but it was still a really tight game against a really good New York Knicks team, and this is a team that had beaten the Heat in every matchup prior to this one, right? Uh, This is Miami's first win against the Knicks all season. And you look at what it is that Jimmy Butler did, how Tyler Hero stepped up in the fourth, the contributions that they got up and down the roster that we'll get to later when we get to credit cookies. And the fact that, to your point, they kind of executed on the things that they wanted to do. Another Spoism this year is KPIs, right? Key performance indicators is something that Spo likes to talk a lot about. And you kind of go down the list, and for the most part, the Heat delivered on most of their KPIs. The rebounding edge was a little too far out of whack. But other than that one, like, you hit the three-pointers. You kind of got the looks that you wanted to get. You got to the point. You scored 42 points in the paint. You got the turnovers. You got 17 turnovers from the Knicks. You scored 20 points off of those turnovers. And then you had the guys who you usually want to step up late in the game step up. And then you got the big contributions from Kyle Lowry and Max Struess and and Caleb Martin off the bench. And so, yeah, to say that this is the, the best one of the season, I'll, you know, I'll say it's just sort of the most well-rounded win of the season, at least the one, at least what I can remember, right? Like who cares about November, December, even January at this point in the games that really matter. This was the win that to me stands out. And now the heat have won six of their last 10 games. They're literally within percentage points of the nets for right. getting that number six seed. And, and it feels like they're they're They've sort of, I'm not going to say that they've put everything together because there's still things that you'd like to see specifically Absolutely. with consistency, and we're going to get to that topic later on. But this is as well as the Heat have played all season is this stretch right now. I can't keep, I can't shake the the level of understanding from this team. We have seen them get minor wins here and there, and then just drop a couple of games, and so you never exactly understand if this team knows what's at stake on a night-to-night basis, they deny that they watch the standings. They say that that doesn't really matter what opponent they face in the playoffs, et cetera. And yet it was evident tonight 
that this was a game that they wanted to win, and they put forth a, a incredible effort for 48 minutes, something we have not seen from this team. Either they turn it on in the second half or they have a good second quarter. This mm. was consistently good from this Miami Heat team, playing incredible defense. And as they get as the game progressed, you saw Bama to Bio get more physical with Julius Randle. Uh, Jimmy Butler jawing at Jalen Brunson and vice versa. You know, technicals being issued. Kevin Love diving to the floor at age 34. And I know, got season. hit in the head again. Poor yes. guy. Like, right where it looked like he got the stitches the last time. I was like, dude, yeah. stop doing this. Um, well, you're right. The, to, to say they did it for 48 minutes is, is, is a very accurate statement. They led by as many as 11 points in the third quarter. The Knicks made that little 9-2, to 9-3 run, something like a 9-4 yep. run at the end of the third. But the Knicks are going to make runs, right? Like the Heat then pulled away. They led by as many as ten in the last couple of minutes. The uh, RJ Barrett made a couple of free throws on a three pointer to cut that ten point lead to five, and then the Heat just pulled away again. So every time the Knicks kind of got close, the Heat were like, "All right, very cool. We're going to pull away. Good for you. We're going to pull away. Thanks a lot for being right. here." Um, and so in that respect, all all of those things I agree with. Can we talk a little bit about their defense on Julius Randle? Because he's a couple of nights removed from scoring 57 points against Minnesota, had another big night after that, and then he comes into Miami, 15 points on 16 shots, a variety of looks that they sent to Julius Randle. Uh, Bam Adebayo started on him and was on him for most of the night. We saw Jimmy Butler on him when Bam was off the court, and then at the end of the game in the fourth quarter, um, they did a really good job walling off the paint from Julius Randle. You and I kind of hypothesized, like, what is it that you're going to try to take away from Julius Randle? And I think you made the point, like, just keep him as far away from the basket as possible. If he makes the threes, he makes the threes. They contested on the threes that he did take. Uh, what did he go for? He he went uh, on three pointers, uh, one, one of five. five. Yeah. yeah. So he took he the threes, but um, yeah, I thought it was a a really fantastic defensive effort from the Heat, who. I don't know. It kind of seemed like they were glossing over the questions about Julius Randle in the lead up to this game. They're like, Julius Randle who? Almost. (laughs) Um, I don't want to go that far, but Ban specifically saying, you know, he's a great player, kind of things like that. Like speaking in really vague terminology. Cliches and tropes and like, but like, yeah, but not in the, like, I kind of felt like they were almost insulted that we were asking them about Julius (laughs) Randle. They're like, you're going to ask us about Julius Randle right now? Right. Like, I'm Bam Adebayo. I'm Jimmy Butler. I'm Eric Spolstra. I don't care about Julius Randle. But then they came out with very intentional in stopping Julius Randle, and I thought their defense on him was as impressive as I've seen any team defend Julius Randle, especially lately. Bam took it personally. Like, you could see it. Like, he absolutely wanted that challenge. Stop talking um, about this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when he was in the game, especially in the fourth quarter, he played 12 minutes in the fourth quarter, the entire fourth quarter. And you could see that he just wanted that challenge. They were kind of going at one another. Uh, it, you know, I've got to give credit to Randall, despite his poor shooting night. He handled the physicality of a player like Adebayo, one of the strongest players in the league, and he was able to adjust accordingly. But Bam just was contesting everything. We talked about this in our preview of the game. Make those shots more difficult. That was Bam's strategy when he, you asked him about it at practice. And basically, that was all they could really do was try and deny him the ball as much as possible, make life more, more difficult for him, force him away from the basket where you can't get a head full of steam and finish at the rim, and it worked out. It paid off. You know, they were able to dish the ball out to perimeter shooters. Quentin Grimes had a huge night, of course, another random scrub. Not scrub, but rather the random player having a big night against yeah. Miami. Uh, 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 Jalen Brunson was phenomenal. Yep, uh, He had a really, really good game, too. And they just get some big contributions all across the board. Josh but Hart, 12 points off the yeah, bench for them. And then overall, they Randall. shot... Yeah, they stopped Randall. Randall. Yeah. That's the head of the snake, right? R.J. Barrett, 26 points. They shot 16 of 40, 40% from three-point range. It helps a lot that Miami shot 57% from three-point <laughs> range. We, we went this long without talking about it, but so often this season, it's come down to the three-pointers. A lot of Heat players stepping up, making those threes, a lot of drive and kick. I like the in-rhythm, uh, the pace of the game. I liked all of that. We're going to talk about more of that and who specifically stepped up when we get to credit cookies next, but first... Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. I'm really excited about our new partner and our sponsor of today's show, the mobile game Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NBA general manager and managing your own basketball franchise, well, your dream can come true, sort of, virtually, and this game is for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to glory. You're responsible for everything, hiring the right coaches and assistants, trading and training players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft, and all of the ups and downs 
of an NBA season. And all this is challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is completely free. It's playable offline. You can play on the go and when you want to. Uh, I've said this before, but if you were a fan of Madden franchise mode or any of those kinds of franchise modes for any kind of game, this game was made for you. I love that stuff. This game was made for me. I've been addicted to this. I've spent way more hours than is healthy on this game already. Locked on Heat listeners got a 100% free boost to their franchise when they're using the promo code LOCKED ON in all caps in the game store. So make sure to check that out too. To download the game, just visit probasketballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up on your app store. That's probasketballgm.com. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM, start your dynasty today. Locked on Heat is also available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So please do subscribe over there. Uh, it's time to get in the kitchen and whip up some credit cookies, David, because we are talking after another heat win. What kind of cookies should we hand out today? I don't know. I was thinking chunky chocolate chip, something like that, like really in the mud, like this game was, but also ultimately fulfilling. Thorough? Like a th- yes. Like <laughs> thorough. Yeah, sure, sure. Why not? Just a lot of everything mixed in. They're really, really good. And yeah, uh, yeah it's just a best heat win, I guess. I'm into it. Um, all right. Where to start? Do we, I mean, I guess we could start with the obvious one. Jimmy Butler, man, mm. 35 points, 11 of 19 shooting. He made two three pointers, stared down Dwayne our Wade. friend Dwayne Wade after making one of them, like almost like, hey, you never did this stuff. Uh, 14 it, it brought a laugh out of me on a media row there, just watching that because it, it was just, it, it was such great drama, great theater. It's Jimmy Butler to a T. Like, you know, they're great. You think Wade was saying something to him? Like, you're not making that again. Maybe like, he's after only he made the shooting. first one because that was the second one. Yeah. Um, nine assists and four rebounds, four steals, four steals for Jimmy Butler. I mean, there was some plays in this game that was just like, it really did feel like, I know we kind of throw around the word playoff Jimmy a lot, but, mm. um, there was one. Uh, there was one play where uh, Bam was def- got switched on to Jalen Brunson. And by the way, like Bam's defense, we're going to talk about in a second. But I still laugh every time a guard gets Bam on a switch and then thinks that that it's a mismatch because yeah. Jalen Brunson got Bam on a switch and he was just sort of clearing me out, isolate. I got a center on the, on me, and Bam was like, "All right, bet, let's go." And <laughs> and and Jalen Brunson couldn't get past Bam. Bam stayed in front of him the whole yeah. time. Forced like this off balance uh, uh, pass from Jalen Brunson, and Jimmy Butler sniffed it out and was like, "All right, give me that." Picked it out of midair, got down to the other basket, got fouled, uh, made two free throws at the line there. So that was just some, one example of a Jimmy play. Had that dagger, uh, well, not quite a dagger, but he had that huge like seventeen footer with like a minute and forty five seconds to go in that game. Uh, huge fourth quarter for him. Can't say enough about this guy, man. I don't know how many cookies to give him. There's a lot of cookies I want to give out, but we got to start there. Three seems fair, uh, and at the same time, probably not enough, and maybe too many at the same time, given that we yeah. only have 10 to give out, but just a phenomenal performance. I think, again, a microcosm of everything I discussed about the team in general. The intensity has been there for Jimmy, but it never waned while he was in there. It's just incredible understanding of momentum shifting plays, making either the right stop, the right steal. A forcing a turnover, doing whatever was necessary, taking it to the hole, shooting that you know, fadeaway jumper of his and nailing it at just the right time, getting to the lane what was necessary. Never, I mean, 14 free throws. In the last game, he had 20 free throw attempts. And I thought to myself, there's no way he's going to be able to duplicate that. He took 14 today, hitting 11 of those. And yet none of them felt like egregious calls. They were just like within the flow of the offense. And he was just getting bumped off of his spots. And what are you going to do? You're going to have to be, you're going to force the refs to make those calls. I know a lot of Knicks players throwing their hands up, but they were mistaken. Jimmy earned those trips to the line and he earns the three cookies tonight. I like the three. Um, let's go. Where do we go next? Uh, Tyler hero four. Can I, can pointers. I throw you a curveball? Can I throw you a curveball? Sure. Let's do it. Kyle Lowry. I was going to get to him. He's on my list. Yeah. Let's talk about Kyle Lowry then. Kyle Lowry going to the game impactful at the point in time when I think Miami was, I can't recall the exact score when he entered the game eventually, but it was really tight at that point. Kyle comes in and almost immediately shifts the energy. We have talked about him lately, how impactful he's been in his minutes. And a lot of those impactful minutes have been in the fourth quarter. They were tonight as well, but he had big moments earlier in the game too to help kind of Miami pull away, build a little bit of a lead that was absolutely necessary and what was yet another clutch game for the Heat. And so I, I just liked his intensity. He drew charges making smart passes, driving to the rim, 
hitting big shots. Just a great overall night for Lowry. Um, as you know, I keep notes as as I watch these games, and I kind of break them down by quarter, and it's just sort of possession by possession. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing a play by play, but I just take notes of important plays or plays that stand out to me. And Kyle Lowry's name is there more than any other Heat player's name on my notes. I'm just going to read the kind of the bullets here. Kyle Lowry touchdown pass to Jimmy Butler in the first right. quarter. Second quarter, Kyle Lowry on on. Well, I got I made a note because he's making a bunch of threes early in the game. Since he's come back from the injury, he's basically shooting 57 percent on threes. All right, so that that time has been very refreshing for him. Uh, Lowry, great steal with uh, uh, deflection off of Mitchell Robinson in the paint, poked the ball away. Um, we got another one over here. Kyle Lowry knocked ball away again from the Knicks with a third with a minute and a half to go. Right. Heat up ten. So those are just a few examples of some of the things that I have on Kyle Lowry. It's, it's just all those in-between plays. That's the stuff that we wanted to see from Kyle Lowry that we saw a lot last year, that we saw early in stretches this year, uh, but that kind of went away from him when he was kind of getting banged up, but he took that time off and he looks really refreshed. So I'm with you with uh, the credit cookies for him. I'm 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 good to give him two. Yes, absolutely. Right. I think that's fair. Tyler Hero, the four uh, three-pointers in the fourth quarter. He's been Come unbelievable, on. man. In these fourth quarters, 14 points in the fourth yet, eight points in the first three quarters combined. Fourth quarter hero is becoming That's a, a thing different right player. Now. He's just a different player. Like none of the over dribbling, none of the kind of finding his spots. Like, oh, I've got the ball from eh, anywhere within 30 feet. I'm going to let it fly. And I'm going to hit that shot. He made two really there. tough corner threes. He made yeah. the one that was with just regular half court offense, uh, uh, shot clock kind of winding down, had to take a shot, and and he just made it. And then the and then Spo later on drew up uh, uh, ATO specifically Bam setting the screen left wing Tyler Hero kind of comes down gets settled right into the corner kind of a, a, a better look an open look drills that one too um, both of them uh, huge um, to take uh, the, the one of them sent the game from a, a one possession to a two possession game with right. about four minutes to go so um, yeah Tyler Hero was awesome I'm ready to give him two but then that's what three two. Five, seven. We have seven. So, all right, we're going to be limited to I think one cookie a piece now. Um, Bam, Bam gets one. Offensively, sure. he struggled, but defensively, but he was so important. But yeah, I, I think we talked about it on Randall, but just the way he kept kind of just getting him off of his spot, and and Randall is an impressive physical specimen out yes. there on the floor. His yes. combination of size and speed and strength. Allows him to bully over almost anybody. He bullied past Jimmy on some occasions. That dude is. I, I was watching him pregame too, like not yeah. in a weird way, but he's like, <laughs> he's chiseled. That dude is chiseled. It's a little stalkerish. A little stalkerish. I don't know, man. Like he was. All right, whatever. I'm not trying to be weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Bam had his hands full. Uh, he gets a credit cookie uh, for what he did. And offensively, he wasn't bad. He still scored 15 points. So. Um, a good night. Look, overall he was friend. settling a little bit, I think, you know, but I think he, again, understanding, you know what, this is what's necessary of me. It's not to get to the other guys had it cooking. I'm good with right. it. And he had, right. you know, he had a few assists, seven rebounds. Uh, I'm good with it overall. It wasn't his best offensive game, but I'm good with it. Um, Gabe Friday Vincent. Cookies. Yes. Big Nin game. 19 points, three of five from three point range. I feel like he made all three of them in the first half. Definitely two of them. Um, a really good game from him. When you talk about the Heat going 16 of 28 from three-point range, 57% overall, Gabe Vincent was a really big part of that. Yeah, he was phenomenal. Uh, look, he defensively he had a couple of missteps, but overall I think his offense was just so necessary and crucial. He had 15 points. He was three of four from three uh, you know, in the first half, eventually three of five overall. So you were right. He hit all of his threes yeah. in the first half. But just it was – you know, big game Gabe. We've seen him periodically uh, throughout his career and this season. I think a little bit less of that, but still, again, understanding what was necessary, coming up with big shots, rising up to the challenge. I, I can't get away from that. That's my biggest takeaway of that is the fact that this Heat team, and I don't know how sustainable it is, and we'll talk about that late, later on in the next segment, but for them to understand what was at stake and to rise up to the challenge, something that they have kind of shied away from or been inconsistent with all season long, Kudos to them as a team. Last credit cookie goes to Max Struess. Um, right. A nice night for him. 11 points off the bench, 3 of 4 from 3-point range, 4 of 5 overall. Um, surprisingly, best plus minus on the team at plus 10. That was um, He was a big part of those lineups that really worked as the heat kind of shifted smaller and smaller as the game went on. But to me, I'm giving him the credit cookie. Two huge 3-pointers in that fourth quarter. 
big three uh, with seven minutes left to go after the Knicks made their little run there and actually yep. took the lead at the start of the fourth. Max Strews comes in, hits a big three-pointer, puts the heat up uh, by one, 101 to 100. And then later on in that fourth quarter, another big three to go up 111-102 with four and a half minutes left to go. Those fourth quarter threes really matter. Max Strews, he was productive. More than anything, I think that the Heat, I think we get bogged down in some of the other stuff off the bench. But more than anything, they just need production. They need points off the bench. Max mm-hmm. Strews had him tonight, and I think he deserves a cookie. Two steals also. I don't, I don't know if you pointed oh, those you out. But yeah, yeah. Um, just a nice drive to the rim at one point also. I think he cut to the basket on a broken play, and he was able to score. Uh, one time, the ball was kind of one possession in one of those fourth quarter threes that you mentioned. Like, it bounced off Jimmy. It was a broken play that had been defended very well. Kind of just landed in Max's hands, and he just said, you know what? I'm going to shoot it, and he nailed it. And it was a big momentum yeah. shift for Miami because it looked like New York was starting to gain a little traction again. And that three kind of just sunk up right back down, helped create a little bit of a cushion for the Heat. So it was a big game for him. Absolutely. Defensively, I have to point it out. I tweeted about it. But Emmanuel quickly just was like, oh, Max Drews is on me? Okay. You know, he just seemed like he was going to try and attack him. It didn't always work either. I'm not mm. sure exactly what he saw in that matchup or why he thought he was going to be able to dominate it. But either way, he was calling for that switch on every possession and not to his advantage either. So a little perplexing. Um, Look, the Heat have played well. We've talked about it this whole show. Is this the version that we're going to see? Is this the version of the Heat that we'll see in the playoffs? I have one stat that's pretty encouraging, uh, and we're going to get to that next. But first, David, tell the listeners about our sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The tournament is heating up, and now it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's a bonus bet back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. You can bet on everything. Can Miami continue to shoot over 50% from three for the rest of the season? I, I don't know. It's looking more and more promising. Plus, plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet of up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with Fanduel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Locked on Heat, Twitter, Instagram. You can email us, lockedonheat at gmail.com. Thanks to everybody who sent in questions on Twitter. Using that hashtag, ask LO Heat. We'll get to this one from Shesh, who writes in, the team is capable of playing well when focused, but the theme of the season is inconsistency. Which version of the Heat uh, of the team do you think we'll see in the playoffs? Focused and a tough out every game or just showing up every other game? David, what do you think? I know that uh, we've been kind of... Well, it, it's been challenging to kind of look too far ahead. Uh, even tonight, when we saw the three-point shooting, I, I don't know if it's a mirage... I know that you're a little bit more optimistic that it's a regression to the mean. At the same time, uh, I am somewhat buoyed by tonight's effort, something that I think you know they haven't really, again, fully understood all season long. The fact that they brought it against a team that is directly above them in the standings, understanding what's at stake there, whether they're able to climb their way past Brooklyn into the fifth seed remains to be seen. But you can't get there without wins like tonight. Huge momentum shift for them, I think, moving forward. So I see this team, and I understand, I see them understand what's at stake tonight on a playoff intensity. And there was real intensity in tonight's game, unlike what we've seen for most of the regular season. And I think it's sustainable. I think it's something they can carry over into the playoffs. So I think this version of the team is the version that we'll see moving forward. Um. Despite the question, I'm not going to get trapped into making some sort of prediction because I have no idea what's going to happen, and I don't think anybody does. I will say this. I I, I kind of teased going into that last break um, a stat, and here it is. Over the last 10 games, I mentioned the Heat have won six of the last 10. During that stretch, they're shooting 39% from three. That's Pretty best good. in the league. I mean, that's that's right where you want to be. You want to be shooting 39%, 38 39%. That's where the Heat were last year. That's what they've been doing the last 10 games. Um. So that, to me, is the most encouraging stat. If it, if it is positive regression to the mean, it, it it's very good that it's happening now. And if you want, you could really talk yourself into, like, I could, if I could do, like, sort of A block radio segment, why the Miami Heat are the team nobody wants to play in the playoffs. And then mm. I can kind of go down the reasons why. Uh, Jimmy Butler is proven that he could play at playoff Jimmy level, like we're seeing right now. Kyle Lowry is playing the best basketball of the season. And we see when he is doing like what, what he can do 
what he can provide when he's refreshed and invigorated this way, yep. he's a huge asset on the court. So you're getting the best version of Kyle Lowry, and then the three point shooting that I the three point shooting that I already mentioned. So if you want to, if you kind of want to talk yourself into the fact that Miami's best basketball is only ahead of them, you could easily go that route, David. And so I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I'm just saying right now there's at least sort of a feasible argument to be made that that might be so, right? We'll see what ends up happening, obviously. The downside of it is that they still can't defend anybody. The, the downside of it is during this stretch, they're still one of the worst 10 defenses in the league by defensive rating. They gave up 34 points in the fourth quarter uh, to the Knicks tonight. That's winning time. You'd like for that. And granted, they scored 35 points of their own in the fourth quarter, but this looks like an offensive team lately. I still have questions about the starting lineup. I still have questions about the rotations. Eric Spolstra obvious, obviously has questions about the rotations because he's tinkering with them every other night. But there's indicators here that are encouraging, and they're the indicators that you and I have been pointing to all year long of the things that need to get fixed or improve, and those things are getting fixed, and they are improving. So whether or not this is going to be what happens in the playoffs, I don't know, but I do think they have a better sense, and Eric Spolster specifically has a better sense of what his team is now than even a month ago. That's fair. I, I think, you know, I texted you during the game. I, I think the the rotations, they've really found some kind of, I'm not going to go so far as to say consistency, but they found a recipe that seems to work. Kyle coming off the bench, his accepting of that role is huge. Yeah. And he's been so impactful in that. And I hate that Victor Lodipo is the odd man out, but because of his freelancing sort of chaotic nature you're not quite sure what you're going to get from him on a night-to-night -night basis which is part of what has fed into Miami's inconsistency over the last 10-15 games and so you know I, they, they they seem to have found something look I, and I also like the few minutes we didn't shout him out last segment Haywood Heisman came in here a couple wonky offensive plays uh one basset pass in particular that I never want to see uh and I any kind of highlight but at the same time defensively rising up to the challenge I liked his physicality. I like what he was able to bring to the table. He, he played some good, solid minutes. Came, came in over Omer Yurtsevin, who seems to be the other odd man out when you talk about not really knowing what's going to happen when they're on the court. Spo has sort of taken Victor Oladipo out of the equation. He's also taken Omer Yurtsevin out of the equation because you're not really sure what Yurt is going to do on either end. It's not so dramatic and loud as when Victor Oladipo chucks up 18-footers uh, with 13 seconds left on the shot clock. But um, he trusts Highsmith, obviously, yes. more. And I also think... And I, defensively, and I think he likes that look of having Kevin Love at center and spacing out the floor a little bit and creating room for Jimmy and Bam. He's staggering Jimmy and Bam so that there's never a minute with when when either of them are not on the court. Um, so to your point, I do think Spo has found something now. He's still sort of tinkering with the minutes pattern, but I mm. think we know what his top nine guys are going to be. That could change when Cody Zeller eventually returns, but for now, I think this is what uh, we're going to see moving forward for the most part, um, but or not. I don't know. Suppose surprised us before. He'll do it again. No doubt. Thanks again for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Remember to subscribe to new episodes of Locked on Heat on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Ring the bell to get notified as soon as new episodes go up. Now make your second listen, Game to Game NBA. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked on Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked on can deliver. Follow the game to game on Locked on NBA. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. David, thanks for joining me. Thank you for joining me. Good luck in Bozeman. Jeez. Oh, <laughs>